What's up, Metal and Heavy Music fans? Today we finally have a review of Prescriptive McGovern's Opsu with their self-titled album via Agania Records. If you're unfamiliar with Opsu, they were a Texas-born black metal band that got their start in the early 90s and one that stood out with their emphasis on the highly technical drumming and signature vocal style of Prescriptor McGovern. This new material has been nearly 10 years in the making since 2011's fantastic Opsu, but sadly some very public and potentially phobic band disagreements that I'm not going to get into here led to the group disbanding only for Prescriptor to rebrand it soon after with an adjusted lineup under his own name. Comments are absolutely welcome on these details but after a decade of waiting, I'd be lying if I said this wasn't one of my most anticipated releases to close out 2021. Well, we're waiting. Starting with Amenta, Accelerando, Azin, including Hierophantasmal Expounder. <laughs> That's a mouthful. A swirly, technical, yet atmospheric intro opens the album, one that is great for headphones as there are embedded whispery vocals that seem to phase back and forth. And then we rip right back into it with the usual staccato vocals and mathy, neck-snapping pace changes of the drums the fans know and love. I was already noting at this point that the guitar work here has a different feel in comparison to the talented Melissa Moore. There's a bit more focus on higher pitch tremolos and even some kind of immortal-esque sounding melodies. Next up, we have Esoterically Excoriating the Exoteric, and clearly they haven't lost their sense of Dr. Seuss-worthy titles, which was always part of the fun when it comes to the mythology of this band. I also started to notice here the shifts in production, which I'm still kind of on the fence about. It has kind of a fuller, bassier sound, with Prescriptor's vocals relegated a bit more to the background. I just think that Absu and the track they did for Adult Swim captured their sound perfectly, but ultimately this works too. But as far as the song goes, it's definitely among my favorites. Lots of great twists and turns with some guitar lines that really put that smirk on my face as this band somehow never fails to do. And backed by a very understated choral synth that further emphasizes the overall atmosphere. Then we have Quasaric Pestilence, another strong composition here, but one also further showcasing these slight shifts in overall approach to melody. Like all of the usual hallmarks are there, the lightning speed, the start-stop rhythms, the thrash influences, but there is still just this almost uncanny valley sense of something being slightly off. And I mean that not in a bad way, just the fact that it's so close yet slightly different that gave me a very interesting feeling early on. Either way, this is another banger of a track, and that descending portion with the one-two punch of the vocals, guitar, and snare that first shows up around the 35 second mark gets me every time. Miroracles has kind of a proggier feel that reminds me quite a bit of Vector and also some pretty impressive rock and roll soloing. Strong emphasis on dueling guitar lines and just the axe work overall. It almost feels like a hey, check out our new guy showcase for Vagrias who has also played in Possessed and Gruesome. No argument here in terms of his abilities, it's again just a matter of adjusting to his different approach. As far as in-betweenness, Gateway Commuters, to avoid repeating myself, I don't have much extra to say about this one beyond what I've already said about the others. But to name a favorite moment, I love that nice little Tom G. Warrior-esque oom. Mm. Leading into the middle section, which also has some really cool female corals that are again kind of just hovering in the background. It's such a simple detail, but one that adds quite a bit to the overall effect of the music. Jupiter and Capricornus is just a straight-up rager that often sounds damn close to some of the songs off of Absu and gets me 90s Nick Cage levels of pumped. Put simply, this thing does more damage in under two minutes than most songs do in double that time. Dedicated to Thoth, but Azathoth wasn't listening, and Necroliquy, another early favorite with this one really getting my head bobbing all the way through, but also one I would call one of the most divergent compositionally from their previous material, at least in some places. Lots of different stuff going on here across the board, but I'm particularly down with the nice alternations between the sort of bouncier sections with those awesome triplets and slides, and the skankier driving parts.
Polygonous Whirl was one of the pre-release singles and it continues to grow on me with each listen. In addition to more amazingly fun and chaotic guitar and drum work packed to the brim with those hooky little slides, this track also has some of Prescriptor's most memorable vocal moments on the album, his venomous delivery seeming to spit on each break and transition. <laughs> The coagulating respite has more skanky beats and galloping guitars to get my motor really running joined with tremolo and synth lines that sound like a swirling tornado demolishing everything in its wake. And of course, we can't ignore the glorious falsetto scream that takes me back to my favorite moments of Abzu's seminal album, Terra. Another single, Prana, Therian, Akasha. If they play this track live side by side with Jupiter, I honestly don't think there will be any survivors. They pack so much into yet another small runtime that it was hard for me to even keep up when taking notes. Just an incredible torrent of thrash with more prog influenced overtones, as well as a few more notable moments from the synth, especially towards the end. Tantrums of Azak Ku, another solid track, although to be honest, if I were to scale this album back just a little, this would probably be one of the ones that I would cut. Even so, there's plenty to enjoy here with it focusing more on the melodic side with very mystical, exotic soundscapes with just a touch of that enslaved flavor. I'm just not sure if it comes together as well, especially in comparison to the final track. So the closer here is also our longest both in length and title with every watchtower within is the axis of a watchtower without, including totemic thresholds. I have no idea what it means, but it sounds cool. This one is a bit more overt in its use of synth, even getting a little weird and experimental with the soundscapes at times, though without ever losing any of the speed and fury of everything that came before. There's this strange beeping noise in particular that stood out amidst the more great ghostly chorals, bells, and towards the end some very 70s. 70s and 80s sounding use of what sounds like Moog leading into the folky acoustic outro. But I think my favorite moment here is the maniacal laugh at about 1 minute and 37 seconds. Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. So all said and done, does this album with almost a decade of development and some very unfortunate infighting live up to expectations? Let's turn to the scales to find out. I give Absu a 9 for enjoyability as I can't deny just how infectious it is. I feel like it takes a second to really get started, but once the engine turns over, it's full speed ahead. I give it a 9 for musicianship. Overall, the writing and especially the performances here are absolutely top notch. This is one of the very few black metal bands I think are just as impressive as any mathcore or tech death band out there. They're like the Dillinger escape plan of their genre. I do want to pay tribute once more though to the loss of the very talented Melissa to the lineup, and if her story is true, she deserved better for her incredible contributions to this band over the years. And by the way, be careful if you Google her to make sure you're looking up the right Melissa Moore. Just saying. And I give it an 8 for innovation. This is mostly just the usual Absu under a different name, but with that lineup change, I do hear Vagrias putting his own little signature touch to the album without them losing their overall DNA in the process. So an 8.7 overall and a B plus for Prescriptor McGovern's Absu. Y'all check out this video to see some of my and my YouTuber friends' favorite black metal albums of the year so far, and stick around real soon for my favorite black metal albums of the entire year. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this one, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.